Again, we thank you so much for your patience. This afternoon, most honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness, Mr. Mark Golding, representing leader of the opposition, Mr. Golding here, Archbishop Kenneth Richards, members of the cabinet, Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, Chairman of the Grace Kennedy Board of Directors and other members of the board. Senator Don Webby, Grace Kennedy Group Chief Executive Officer and other members of the executive and senior management or former Grace Kennedy leaders, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the Houses of Representatives, His Worship the Mayor, Senator Councillor Delroy Williams, Mayor of Kingston and St. Andrew, Mr. Marcus Foster, community member, other executives of the public sector and private sector organizations, specially invited guests, representatives of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all, good afternoon. It is indeed my honor to welcome you today to history. It is the opening of Grace Kennedy's headquarters here at 42 to 56 Harbor Street. Is it a nice building? Isn't it a lovely building? Yes? Okay, just, okay. Well, your presence here today makes this event even more special. We are very grateful to have you here today, but we're even more grateful to God without whom none of us would be here today. So to give thanks for life and its blessings and for this beautiful occasion, I now invite Archbishop Kenneth Richards to start us off on the right footing with a word of prayer. preparing for this evening when I did some prayers, and I'm not saying that I'm responsible for the rain that is falling, but I was hoping that we'll get a short blessing, you know, for this occasion. So. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. may God, who has given us the power over the work of his hands, be with you all. In his own life, Christ Jesus clearly showed us the dignity of labor. When he became incarnate, the word of the Father was known as the carpenter's son and willingly worked with the tools of his trade. By working with his own hands, he transformed toil from being an inherited curse for sin into a source of blessings. If we do our work well, whatever it may be, and offer it to God, we purify ourselves, and through the labor of our hands and minds, we build up God's creation. Our work enables us to practice charity and to help the less fortunate, so that joined to Christ, the Redeemer, we grow in his love. Let us bless the Lord then, and pray that he will shower his blessings upon all who work Grace Kennedy Group. And invite your response to the Psalm 90, and your response will be, Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Lord, success, Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And let us now petition the Lord for his grace and blessing upon the Grace Kennedy Group, upon all the workers here and all your clientele, and indeed all the service that you give to the, this community and the wider community of Jamaica. 
and the response to the petitions will be, Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Our God created the world and filled it with marvelous signs of his power. He also blessed human toil from the very beginning so that in modest imitation of our creator's own goodness, we might diligently devote ourselves to bringing creation to its perfection. Let us then offer to our prayer to God saying, Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who gave us the command to work, so that by relying on our minds and our hands, we might devote ourselves to perfecting creation. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who willed that your Son made flesh for us should practice the carpenter's trade. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who in Christ made the yoke of, made the yoke of toil sweet and its burden light. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who in your providence move us always to strive to do our best. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who receive with favor the offering of our labor, so that it becomes an offering of penance, brings joy to our brothers and sisters, and helps the poor, we pray. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who graciously shows wine and bread, the work of human hands as sacramental signs of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Let us pray. O God, in your wise providence, you have blessed all the stakeholders of Grace Kennedy Group. And so we are glad to ask you to bless their human labor, the work of their hands and their minds, as they now activate this building as their corporate building headquarters to service the company and to service our nation. May your Holy Spirit remain with them, meaning their inspiration and their guide, so that with the gracious assistance of your spirit, all that they do, Lord, will be to your glory and to your honor and for the welfare and the advancement of this nation. Hear, Lord, our prayers and grant your blessings and mercies in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. May Almighty God bless this group and this company, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I like sprinkling holy water, but I suppose we'll do that when we go downstairs, okay? <laughs> We all say amen. Thank you, Archbishop. Amen. So earlier we had our annual general meeting here, and our shareholders were very excited to hear how positively our company is growing, as is evidenced by this building. I doubt, though, that any of us are as overjoyed or as proud as my group CEO, who has been beaming with pride for the last couple of weeks, posting on social media, for those of you who follow him, showing off his new source of pride and joy. I welcome him now, I welcome you now, Senator, to come and share with us some of that pride and joy as we open our building today. Please help me to welcome Senator Don Webby. Thanks, Simone. When Simone refers to me as Senator, I get a little nervous, it seems. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I got the list of the salutations, and it was really, really long. <laughs> we have so much, so many important people here, so I will just say all protocols observed. But let me especially welcome our Prime Minister, my friend, Andrew Holness. Um, welcome, sir. And I want to encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. I think you're doing a fantastic job. I glimpsed my old friend also, my ex-boss, Audley Shaw, nice to see you, Audley, and my, and my colleague, Senators Katie Knight, and I saw them, where's the mayor sitting? Oh, mayor right in front of the mayor. So, um, so, so colleagues, Simone is right. This is a special day, not only for me, 
but for the Grace Kennedy group of companies. And may I say, I can describe it as an emotional day for all of us at Grace Kennedy. And maybe that even would be an understatement. As I stand here to speak to you all, I'm filled with pride and excitement about a dream of Grace Kennedy, which has become reality. This building, colleagues, is so much more than a phys physical, structure, physical structure. It is really a manifestation of the vision of generations of Grace Kennedy leaders, many of whom are here with us today. It shows where Grace Kennedy is coming from and is a demonstration of the commitment we made in 1922 that downtown Kingston would always be our home. It shows where Grace Kennedy is 97 years later and where we are headed on our journey to becoming a global consumer group. For the past two and a half years, I have watched as this project has transformed from a construction site into the most beautiful building in downtown Kingston. And may I say, I could be a little biased, but give me a round of applause. <laughs> As the building was going up, we received so much love and so much support from Jamaicans at home and abroad. As Simone mentioned, I'm quite a user of social media these days, especially Twitter, and I found it to be a powerful communicating tool where I actually tweeted over the period of the two and a half years how we were doing, and I was pleasantly surprised by the feedback. Mr. Prime Minister, one of my own photos by my iPhone got 30,000 impressions. You can, you can clap me up here. <laughs> I know you are at it also. We have been saying at Grace Kennedy that what is good for Jamaica is good for Grace Kennedy. This building and the incredible feedback is proof of that. We care at GK and it's clear that we are cared about. We are a company born on Valentine's Day, made of love. And today, especially, we are feeling loved. We are a company that supports Jamaica, and we feel Jamaica's support. And as a company that has taken Grace Kennedy, the Grace brand to the world, the support of Jamaicans everywhere means the world to us. The building really represents a renaissance of the group a fresh, new chapter in Grace Kennedy's book, one which will continue to be written for many years to come. We'll embrace even more, as I see some of my founding shareholders here, our core values of honesty, integrity, and trust. Our word is our bond. We care. That is the soul of the Grace Kennedy Group of Companies. We are very proud of this building, which represents an investment of JA $3.2 billion. We are also proud of the features installed to make sure that, that it is good to and for the environment, as this is one of Grace Kennedy's core values, core areas of corporate social responsibility. As a result, we have installed solar panels on the building, which aren't only decorative, but functional with the ability to give us 30% of our power supply. There is also, there's also rainwater harvesting system in place which provides water for landscaping and other uses. Colleagues and friends, friends, what you see today is a result of numerous discussions and the tireless work of some very committed individuals. I first want to thank Senator Katie Knight. Katie, you like to stand up in the Senate? Stand up now, no man? <laughs> eh? Senator Katie Knight. In his capacity as chairman of the UDC, many, many discussions. The truth is that Katie and I, when we first started the discussion, Katie, I think it's fair to say, 
that we share the same vision for downtown Kingston. Those discussions continued with the current UDC chairman, Senator Ransford Brown, I'm not sure if Senator Brown is, Braham, Braham, sorry, is here. And together we were able to create a framework that would make the building a viable venture. Once that framework was in place, we engaged some of the Jamaica's best, along with some of the world's best. Then we teamed up, very importantly, very, very importantly, we teamed up with the community to make this dream a reality. I want to thank the board of directors, chaired by Professor Shirley, and all our directors are here. We just completed our AGM. Marianne is here from, from Canada. Prof, I want to thank you for believing in this project and really approving that investment of 3.2 billion. It is much appreciated. There's also the faces who work behind the scenes to complete the project. First off, Mr. Michael Ranglin. Is My Michael here? Yeah, Michael is a low profile man, Michael Ranglin. <laughs> Michael, who led the project from GK's end, fiercely dedicating to getting the building done well, within budget and within the timeline. And we did it. We did it, my friend, we did it. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for your hard work. My, my profound gratitude also to our architect, Bob Fowler. Is Bob here? Bob? Bob Fowler, and our, our project manager, Keith Rigby, and their teams. Thanks to Tanya Kay and Bev Rousseau, interior designers, David Goldson, structural engineer, Techion, our furniture suppliers, Mark Dodick is here, Raymond Richardson and Desmond and Errol, Desmond Campbell and Errol Spence. The Sina Farm team from China, who presented the best proposal. I want to thank you for your partnership, our, our Friends from China Farm here, Peter and Simon. <laughs> and at last, but certainly not least, I want to thank the community. I want to tell a little story, and I'm taking the risk, really, of totally going off script. Grace Kennedy, in terms of corporate governance, which we are very proud of, and we have won several awards, not only in Jamaica, but outside of Jamaica for great corporate governance. It is a standard practice in Grace Kennedy that we send out projects of this. In fact, anything over two million has to go to the board for approval, US. And we received four submissions. I rely very heavily on my technical people, Bob and Keith. And they said to me, Don, Sinopharm, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is, is the best deal in terms, Ms. Ten is here, um, in terms of price and quality. And you have no option, Don. Um, you're talking about saving millions of US dollars. To be honest with your colleagues, I felt a little uneasy because I know that I was going to face criticism for awarding the contract to a Chinese company. And was I so right? This very evening, I announced that the contract was going to a Chinese company. I reached up by the top of Harbor Street, and the headlines, I think it was on Nationwide or RGR, Webby appoints Chinese company to do the Grace Canada building in downtown Kingston. I recognized that I had a problem. But you know, at Grace Kennedy, when you have a problem, you also have an opportunity. And I remember very clearly Ronnie, who's here, the MP for the area, feeling very stressed about it, to be honest with you. Feeling very stressed about it. And I drove from the old parking lot, and I looked up Hanover Street, and I saw a number of young men on the road doing nothing. The other road was even worse no employment. I spun around my car, it was like yesterday, I remember like yesterday, by the Jamaica Stock Exchange, came around and I said, Mike, I want to see Sina Farm right away, immediately. We met with them, I think it's Peter and Simon, Peter and Simon, and I said, listen, 
I said, I have a problem. I have a problem. Prime Minister said to them that their, the project calls for 180 people to work on the site at any one time. I said to them that you need to hire 150 Jamaicans and you need to hire them from the community. Respect you, you lived up to your commitment. What you are seeing here, <laughs> what you are seeing here is a product of Jamaican hands from this community building the Great Scanner Building. That's what you are seeing here. <laughs> and you know, what I found amazing that when Jamaicans are given the opportunity, they work hard. Those fellas over from Southside and other areas, right? Nine, ten o'clock in the night, they were here working. And what made me feel good is when I was coming out of my car, done, so with me, they were so proud to show me that they were actually working and not begging. And for me, oddly, KD, Ronnie, Prime Minister, that is a success story for me. That is a success story for me. And it's something that, that is something that I will always treasure that I was able to contribute to. The next thing though, Minister Shaw, I would love, and I, I probably need to lean on you and Prime Minister and others, I want to find a way to get these 150 members some sort of a certification, some certificate, something that they can go to another building site and say, and say watch it. I was part of the thing doing mason work at the Grace Canada building so they can get a job. So they can get that opportunity to get a job. I really, really feel very passionate about it that we need to help these guys to move on. I don't want them to go back to what they were doing before. So this partnership with the community has spanned many years. We can talk about Grace and staff and the Grace Foundation. And I've promised them, um, and you're going to hear from one of them today, that uh, we're going to have a special jam session for them um, shortly. I also, I must also express my heartfelt gratitude to a group of people we refer to here at Grace Kennedy as the founders and leaders of this company. I'm talking about the families like the Kennedys, many of whom are here. And there's a special Kennedy that is in my heart today. His name is Francis Parker Kennedy, my great friend. <laughs> Paco and I literally would dream of this day, of this building, of how downtown Kingston is looking. And Charles, his son is here. Charles, there are many daughters. Many, many daughters were in Paco and myself. And I must say, Mary's face it too, was part of that discussion. And Stephen, his son, we used to go and have a cup of coffee and dream about this day today. I want to salute Mr. Francis Parker Kennedy today for his vision. <laughs> I want to salute the Masalamans. Peter and Jimmy are here today. I want to salute the Alexanders who are here today. I know Teddy is here. Teddy Alexander is here. I want to salute the list of visionary leaders of this group since inception. Sir John Grace, Mr. Carlton Alexander, Raf Diaz, James Masalaman Sr., and Douglas Orain. I can tell you, colleagues, for them, for us, this is a manifest manifestation of their hopes and their vision. I feel so proud to know that we have honored the memories of those who are no longer with us and lived up to the expectation of those who are here today. And from the bottom of my heart to the founding members of the family and all, I'm truly, truly honored to be leading this great company at this exciting and historic time in its journey. Here today, what you are looking at is a finished state-of-the-art structure that is beautify, beautifying the skyline of downtown Kingston, contributing to its redevelopment and helping us to restore 
downtown Kingston Mayor to its rightful place as a jewel of the Caribbean. It's also a demonstration of the growing confidence of Grace Kennedy in Jamaica. I can tell you sincerely, although I may look very young, I've been in business for over, I've been at Grace Kennedy for nearly 25 years. And I want to say this, and the Prime Minister is here, and KD, and Ronnie, and Audley, and others. I have never, never been so optimistic about investing in Jamaica in all my professional career, and I mean that. <laughs> so this building is a proud reminder of how all who work at Grace Kennedy with the vision and hard work, amazing results can be achieved. May God bless the Grace Kennedy headquarters and those who work on it. May God bless Grace Kennedy and the team all across the world. May God bless downtown Kingston and God bless Jamaica. And I always finish my speeches anywhere in the world I speak. God bless Jamaica, the greatest country in the world. Thank you. Always nice to see my boss get very emotional. Thought I would have to bring you a tissue, but you held it together. I'm proud of you, boss. Proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Webby. Um, this, building, this building, no bias. It really does stand out very beautifully on the skyline of downtown Kingston, and it will fit in very nicely with all the redevelopment efforts that are going on, led in very large part by this gentleman I'm going to introduce to you now, who is working, working, working. Please don't dedicate that or, or um, associate it. There's no innuendo. Mayor Williams, we see what you are doing, um, and we are proud of what you are doing for the redevelopment of downtown Kingston. I invite you now to give us remarks. I'm glad you're here with us today. I know you're a busy man. Please, a round of applause for our, our mayor, Mayor Delroy Williams. Madam Chair, Most Honorable Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Olness, Minister Shaw, other members of the Cabinet, MP Ronald Twaits, MP for Central Kingston, which is where the Grace Kennedy headquarters is now, building is now, it's the constituency, Senators KD Knight, and Robert Morgan, and I'm sure Don Webby. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the Grace Kennedy Group Board, and uh, Professor Shirley, Port Authority, um, holding two caps here, CEO of the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, Robert Hill, and I um, see members of the diplomatic community, members of the business community, residents of Central Kingston and other adjoining areas in the downtown area, other members' media, good evening. Well, I take my inspiration from, and being very honest about this, from the Prime Minister himself. So the leadership that you speak of within the municipality, I'm really inspired by the leadership at the level of the central government the Prime Minister himself. So a lot of what you see in terms of the leadership at the municipal level is really taking, drawing source from the leadership at the level of the central government led by our Prime Minister. Senator Webby did say that this, this is a most important time in the history of our country to do business. And he, as, a, as a person who is leading a major business within Jamaica, for him to be saying that must be very important and, and something that we should take note of other members of the business community and generally residents and citizens of Jamaica who have been investing in various, recently Wigtag and Wigton and others to come. 
The, I just, my remarks will be brief. I just want to say that you know, we are quite grateful to, to Grace Kennedy, to the Grace Kennedy Group for the role that the group has played over the years in the, the redevelopment and in, in their commitment to the redevelopment and their consistency in this commitment to the redevelopment of, of our city and in particular downtown Kingston. This is a major step that they have taken and others are following and others will follow and it will go towards making downtown what we want it to be. The, when, we, when we took administration of the council, we did say that we wanted our city to become the pearl of the Antilles, the light of the Caribbean Sea. And we said it was certain. We weren't hesitating. We, 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 did, we borrowed the word, the term, pearl of the Antilles, of course, from history. But we felt it was attainable that we could do it. And, but that to do it, you, it would have to be a teamwork. The, the KSA MC could not do it on its own. And I believe that this is a special, it's almost like providence. This is a special moment in history where all the leaders in very important institutions, whether it be government or the business leaders, that all the leaders coming to take hold of, of key agencies and businesses, that they seem to have a similar vision for the country and for the municipality. And that is also very important in driving us towards the vision of Kingston being the pearl of the Antilles, the light of the Caribbean Sea. The light of the Caribbean Sea is very important and it's, it's, it's separate from the pearl of the Antilles in that, Senator Webby, it speaks to our leadership in problem solving across the Caribbean so that we are faced at the municipal level by a myriad of, 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 of problems and issues and some very complex. And to solve them, we need, we need a special generation of young persons, a special generation of leaders, of problem solvers. And that we believe that Kingston should take the lead in this. And that's what, so when we say the light of the Caribbean Sea, what we are really referring to is that we are taking the lead in offering solutions to the various problems, some complex problems that we are confronted with across the Caribbean, but across the world. And that is not, it is attainable. We can do it. We can create a generation of young persons who are solving complex problems. That's the, the municipality is bent on this. Now, as I close, I'd also like to say, and to, because we need the support. So the redevelopment of downtown is also, it's very, so when we look at this stretch for, at, at the level of the municipality, we easily conceptualize this modern downtown Kingston along Port Royal Street. And then we look beyond the Port Royal Street and we're saying, well, we have to keep the architecture, the Georgian architecture, because we have to preserve that kind of history. And so we are looking at downtown at this the modern stretch along Port Royal Street, and then going inward, you're seeing the, the architecture, the historic Georgian and so forth. And the municipality is bent on preserving that and making that a part of the, the, the beauty, the pearl of our city. The, but very important to that is the, is the center of the city when designed, which is the parade. So the parade area is really the intersection between Queen Street and King Street. That was the design when it was first designed. And the parade area is rich in history. It's where we have Court Methodist Church, Kingston Parish Church, the Jubilee Market, St. William Grant Park, Ward Theatre, and very close by Liberty Hall and the Houses of Parliament. So it's an era rich in history. For us, it cannot remain the way it is. 
and, and, and we, and we, we can't speak of the redevelopment of downtown and the pearl of the Antilles and this vibrant city without looking, taking a serious look at parade. Our view at the KSAMC, we need to increase, well, put it this way, we need to semi pedestrianize parade. We need to semi pedestrianize it. And so it ought to become a part, and it can't be done just by the municipality. So it has to be a cooperative and collaborative effort between the central government, the local government, and all the agencies. And let us focus on really redeveloping and structuring and ordering parade. We can do it, I mean, persons are kind of are fearful because the culture there is kind of, it's, it's settled the culture in the parade. But we believe that you can change behavior through design. So we believe that if we redesign, we can begin to, well, not control behavior, but we can begin to guide behavior through design. And that is something I, I know the architects and so will tell you that. So we need to look at that. We have, as part of our suggestion for that, we have said, let's relocate the buses. We have properties at Petron Street and Darling Street that are now no bus areas, bus terminals, that we believe that we can build a proper transport center at Darling Street, Petron Street, one property owned by the municipality. So we can do that. We take the buses out of the parade area because it's an area too rich in history. Not for it to, to it, it must speak to our history. That area must speak to our history. 3,000 persons died approximately in the 9-11. The and there are monuments there remembering that. 1,000 persons are over died in the 1907 earthquake and the subsequent fires in our city, and, and we believe that that parade area, we can have appropriate monuments there also, so a mix in with the pedestrianization and the mixture of restaurants and shops, and that those that would enhance commerce and business would be our history. So we believe that that is important. Some may say, as I close, some may say, well, we already have a bus terminus, a transport center. Really looking at where downtown is going now, I do not believe that where the transport area is now along Water Lane is where you'd want a, 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 a transport center on your waterfront. So I personally believe it's not the location for a transport center. We can find better use for that, that era now. Some will say, well, we spent $400 million or so forth, but then you can calculate whether or not keeping it as a transport center in the medium to long term is going to give the residents of our municipality the best benefit or the best reward. I don't think so. So let me thank Grace again for the leadership and for getting involved in all the, the fields and areas and discussions about the redevelopment of downtown. It's always easy to speak to Grace. It's always easy to speak to Senator Webby on these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. So many plans, and we look forward to seeing them become reality. We thank you for your work in the area that Grace Kennedy calls home. Grace Kennedy, is also a part of the extended family of this gentleman I'm about to introduce to you. He calls downtown Kingston home as well. And he has been associated, associated with us for many years through our Grace and Staff Community Development Foundation. His name is Marcus Foster, and he will tell you more about that association. And I will tell you more about Marcus on the back end of his speech. Come, Marcus. Marcus is a little nervous, so can we give him a round of applause as he comes? You want me to stay with you? And I'll stay with you.
Most Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Onis, Chairman of Grace Kennedy, Professor Gordon Shirley, Grace Kennedy CEO, Mr. Don Webby. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I was born and raised in Central Kingston, Southside. My father died before I was born. I was raised by my mother along with my siblings, and you can well imagine it was not an easy road. Where there was a lot of family at home, I was able to find that with Grace and staff. Some of my best memories are with Grace and staff at the Tower Street Homework Center, where I spent my afternoon after schools and made friends with other students from the community, and most of all, where I found a place to call home away from home. I was a troublesome boy in school and at the homework center but that did not stop them from allowing me to volunteer with the foundation and give me four chances to work on the Grace Kennedy Summer Employment Program. This made such a difference in my life when news started going around that Grace was doing a big development downtown. We knew the community would not be left out. What made an even bigger difference in my life was when I was selected to work on this building. As a little boy, we would run up and down through Grace, Kennedy, through Grace parking lot, through what was an empty lot, to get to the harbor to hold a swim. To stand here and know that I had an hand in building and Grace building downtown is a big thing to me and to many youths in this community. I, I am now a father and I want to be the father to my son that I never had. I want to give my son market in the world and I am willing to work for it as long as I am given a chance. The great side was a big learning for me. The great side was a big learning for me. I started out as a laborer and by the time the building went up, I was doing carpentry, steel work and making all this all the store up for this building. I, I learned a lot from the gray side that will stay with me for life. Coming from the garrison, born and raised in Southside, Grace Kennedy showed me the world is bigger than downtown and the world and working on this building now makes me a part of Jamaican, uh, Jamaica history. On behalf of every youth, who, every youth who was able to make a dollar and develop our skill, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity and for the investment in the people downtown and in other garrison communities. I am very honored to share my story this afternoon and hope that other com companies will inspire young people the way Grace Kennedy inspired me. Respect. This is what we do, what we do, ladies and gentlemen. And as you see, um, well done, Marcus. Well done, we are so proud of you. This is Marcus on Saturday last. I see Mr. Wrangling down there looking like a proud daddy. So, so Mr. Webby spoke earlier about certification and the truth is that it has begun. So Marcus was one of about a dozen of you, Marcus, gentlemen, 19 gentlemen for whom the certification process has begun through a partnership with Manpower and Maintenance. So Marcus probably has one more session, maybe? We started on Saturday, and within a couple of weeks, he will have his certification in hand, and we have taught him how to fish for the rest of his life. And we know you're gonna make good use of it. Thank you for your story, Marcus. Very inspiring, and it makes us feel good about our relationship with downtown Kingston. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, it is time to welcome our keynote speaker for this evening. We are honored to have with us today the most honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who despite his very 
hectic schedule, found some time for Grace Kennedy, and we appreciate that very much. So please join me in welcoming him to the podium. Thank you, Simone, Archbishop. Thank you for prayers. Um, I suspect that uh, my friend, Ronnie, is representing the leader of the opposition. Sure. <laughs> I wouldn't give that honor to Katie. Oh boy, I tell you. <laughs> Oddly, you must feel very proud in this moment as well. And uh, I don't need to ask Prof Shirley how proud you must feel. And of course, we all know that Don was just fighting very hard. He had about three handkerchiefs in his back pocket. Luckily, he didn't have to, to pull any. But we could see the tears almost welling up in your eyes there. Our friends from the Diplomatic Corps, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom, High Commissioner of Canada, and other members of the diplomatic community who are here, uh, members of the House of Representatives who are here, His Worship the Mayor, who gave a, a lecture on urban planning And of course, the star of the moment, Marcus. Um, and and it's, 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 it's true. You are the reason why we're here. Our friends from the private sector and uh, representatives of public sector agencies, specially invited guests, representatives of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. So, we all gather here in Pride to see the official opening of this nine-story building. Nine-story, right? Or is it ten? <laughs> so you have a basement and nine up, okay. Ten, 192,000 square feet. It's a, a fairly decent size. Fairly decent, yeah. And it has changed the skyline of downtown Kingston. I, I must tell you that I, I didn't come down here for a while, uh, and then when I was driving in, the place looked so different. So different. So, I don't worry about this speech. So, <laughs> there is a new spirit in the country. And it's about time because if we stayed any longer in economic depression, then we could have faced very serious consequences as a nation. This new spirit came on the back of social consensus. It is only a pity that it was hammered out of the country approaching the brink of collapse in 2009 by virtue of the global financial meltdown, which forced us back to the IMF. But that, going back to the IMF, made us take a serious look at ourselves. And we ended up with the first debt exchange. And then we went through a process of, you know, um, the prophecy of bitter medicine. Uh, and then the administration of bitter medicine. And then the recovery from the bitter medicine. The economy is recovering. But we are in the early stages of recovery. 
yes, we have managed to bring down interest rates to levels where investors are forced to do two things. One, not to rely on government paper because you simply just can't get the returns. And two, you are now able to take risk, but projects that were out of reach by virtue of the interest rates are now within reach. And so investors can now invest. I believe we have effectively managed inflation. So there is a sense of predictability and stability in the economy. But more than that, more recent, is that the commitment towards reducing debt is now not just the commitment of a government or a political party, it is a commitment of the nation. Both political parties agree, and whoever forms the government, that will be a key feature of the government, the reduction of the debt. That gives another sense of certainty because it then speaks to good fiscal management. Once we start to say we're going to control the debt, then the, the message that follows from that is that we're going to control spending. And if we control spending, then we can control taxes. And if, if we have that certainty, then we are creating the predictable environment in which the members of the board of Grace Kennedy can sit down on behalf of their shareholders and say, this is an environment in which we can take the risk of putting up this lovely building, which is what the board did. And what we want to happen is for more boards to sit down and on behalf of their shareholders take the calculated risk of making even greater investments in Jamaica. Now, can you imagine if we had 10 other companies doing this? They don't have to spend 3.5 billion, but whatever it is, we want more business people, more companies, more firms to take the risk and invest in Jamaica. The government makes a commitment, and I'm speaking now on behalf of my government, but I'm taking the liberty to speak on behalf of the um, fictional government that may come of the opposition, if that ever happens. <laughs> Don't worry, Ronnie, I'm allowed to take some jobs at you. Don't <laughs> that fiscal certainty will prevail in this economy, and it will prevail and transcend across administrations, across government for a long time. But what is the reward of that fiscal certainty? It's not just the dividend that the shareholders will get. That's good, that's, that's fine. But several things will happen. You have seen today the demonstration of one of them. The social contract of government doing what it is supposed to do, running the economy properly, the private sector investing, and as a result, of that investment, the creation of employment. The community has benefited from the private decisions of the shareholders and directors of Grace Kennedy. And Grace Kennedy is going to reap even more dividend from that because the community now sees this as their building, eloquently said, can you imagine I had a part in building the Grace Kennedy Tower here? You don't need to have security guards anymore, do you? <laughs> but that is the B 
beauty of the investment. But it's more than that. So having changed policy from a high interest rate policy, I see some persons, including friends of mine, saying, well, it is going to affect pensioners and savers because they, we have driven down interest rates too fast and too low. But the truth is that we should never have been relying on government paper in the first place to carry our pension funds. Our pension funds should really have been investing in assets like this. And so the government is going to be very aggressive in encouraging and promoting further developments like this. We already have incentive policies in place with the tax incentives for construction in this area. We want to see more companies take advantage of it. And as I was driving down and I'm looking around, we see so many assets. We see land, valuable land, but it is not realizing its true potential. Just behind you, if you look that way, you will see it. In fact, if you fly over downtown Kingston and you just look at the, I don't want to be undiplomatic, but just the, the, the waste of land and space that is there. The question is, how do we stimulate that development? Yes, the tax incentives. Yes, the certain economic policies. But we also need to have a, a very important player, the entrepreneur, the risk taker who looks on the horizon, sees the potential, and brings together all the factors. In, in this case, we had the group. We had a group of entrepreneurs sitting um, in, 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 in concert, making the decision on the board of Grace Kennedy. We had the government supporting cross administrations. You know, I, I can't believe that um, you know, Katie and I would agree that this is something that, but. <laughs> Don't worry, I have to throw some darts at that. It's the only time I get. <laughs> but we agree that this is very important. And uh, from what I'm seeing from, from where I sit, there are several other projects to come. I don't want to say too much about Port Royal. Uh, Professor Shirley is here. But we are well on our way with the development of Port Royal. Well on our way. Um, I think we might have to do some more public education to make sure that everybody is aware of, of the plans. But the plans will be respectful of the rich history that exists there. Uh, and I believe all Jamaicans will be happy about the development of Port Royal. The UDC has several projects for downtown Kingston, including apartment buildings, office buildings, parking facilities, and uh, um, cultural and entertainment facilities. And then, of course, you would have heard as well about the government circle project. Um, and Parliament, the Parliament building is well on its way. Work is, has, has begun in terms of finalizing the designs. And uh, we have already started work on the Hero Circle, Government Circle project. And then you would have heard the Minister of National Security also um, speak about the Police Plaza, where we have identified the lands for that. I looked at some amazing architectural designs that is in place. Um, and the, the list of projects that I've seen would be about 15 major construction projects slated for Kingston and St. Andrew. We're truly going to transform 
the skyline of the city of Kingston to make it really the pearl of the Antilles. In anticipation of that, we have some major infrastructure work to do. Um, we are very cognizant of the seawall that needs to be built because uh, the truth is that climate change is going to affect Kingston City. There's no question about that with rising sea levels. So we have to do what is necessary to protect the real estate assets that are here. So the government will make the necessary investments in the ap appropriate seawall. The necessary um, utility infrastructure, sewage and water, in particular sewage along this stretch, that investment will be made. We have already um, scoped it, we know what the cost is, and it will be programmed in budgets to come. We're making the necessary provisions to bring water into this area. Um, and we have already made the budgetary provisions for those. Um, clearly, the private sector will always move very swiftly for telecommunications and electricity infrastructure. So the government is going to put in place everything to make sure that when you decide to build, you are well facilitated. The only other issue would be the speed of the approval process. And the mayor is right here. <laughs> the mayor is right here. And uh, I don't know what has been your experience, Don. I suspect it since you, know, you are in the Senate with both gentlemen. <laughs> well, that is something that we have to pay attention to. Generally, the speed of doing business. Um, and uh, yes, we acknowledge that we are not always as efficient in that department as we should be. But don't let that deter you. Don't let that deter you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, the projects that I have pointed out to you, we need to make sure that they move very quickly. So, ladies and gentlemen, those were my key points. Needless to say, that I too am very proud of this day. And I'm looking forward to do more of these. My final word is following on something that Don said. When we start to enter into this phase of rapid development, there is no question that we will have to, uh, where we don't have, bring in the skills and the technology. But we must do so bearing in mind that we have the potential, like any other people, to have those skills and technology internalized and developed here. So we are not bringing in the skills without looking for a transfer of those skills. So if there is any xenophobia or extreme nationalism, put it that way, we should think smartly about this process and recognize that for us to grow, we have to bring in the skills that we don't have here. But at the same time, we should be very instrumental, very strategic in developing those skills so that we can, at some point, do it on our own. I, I can't hide away from the complaints that have been made about local contracting. We have good contractors. I have seen them at work. But I can also tell you, getting complaints from the ministers, from the civil servants, from school principals, from people who live on the roads that are being repaired, about the, 
I don't want to say the word professionalism, but you know, how our contractors behave, their willingness to stick to deadlines and to assure and maintain the highest quality of work. There are some contractors who let us down and we have to be frank about it, that if we are going to get into this drive phase now of the growth, we need to have contractors who are willing to stick to their deadlines, come in under budget and maintain and assure the quality of work. We have some, but we have some who have also let us down. So I think the model that Don has used, which is to ensure that Jamaicans are there, that we are learning and we are getting certification for the learning so we can prove the knowledge, that that is a good model that should be replicated right across Jamaica. So ladies and gentlemen, let not that comment in any way diminish the pride that we all feel about today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I think all having been said today, it feels like there are some good times ahead for downtown Kingston, some good things happening for downtown Kingston, some good things happening for Jamaica, and therefore some good things happening for Grace Kennedy, because if it's good for Jamaica, it is good for Grace Kennedy. And so we affirm, as Archbishop had us pray earlier, Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Lord bless Jamaica land we love, and Lord bless Grace Kennedy. We thank you for being here this evening. We are through. Um, we thank you again for your patience at the top of this event due to our delay, and we thank you for sticking around, and we now invite you outside for refreshments before you go, and we wish you safe passage to your respective destinations. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.